Hi, everyone. Are you comfortable? All right, get comfortable. Make sure you're all settled into your seat. Maybe cross or uncross your legs. Because I'm about to make you potentially very uncomfortable. Not the kind of discomfort like an itch you can't scratch, or if I were to ask you to get up and sing a song right now. <laughs> I'm actually talking about the kind of discomfort that you might feel in an awkward situation because you just don't know what to say. And it all starts with the word viloma. Can we all say it together? I've got it phonetically spelled. Ready? Viloma. One more time. Ready? Viloma. It is my hope that by the end of this talk, you'll not only get comfortable saying this word, but you'll also give vilomas a voice in this world. By now, you might be wondering, what is this word? And why does it make some people cringe? You see, I became a Viloma in 2005. As a mom of three kids, my daughter Macy died. It was, as you can imagine, the hardest thing our family has ever endured. Macy's older brother, Connor, was three at the time, and our other son, Pierce, he wasn't born yet. So he didn't know her in the physical sense, but he knows her in his own way. So when people ask me today, how many kids you have? I stumble all over the place. Three, or is it two, or three? It's the pivotal question every bereaved parent gets hung up on all the time. Do I choose the easier path and just talk about my living children? Or do I include my heavenly child? and invite that awkward discomfort that almost always bulldozes a conversation between two newly acquainted people. I get it. It's really uncomfortable. But the thing is, parents who have lost a child, or had a miscarriage, or a stillbirth, actually want to talk about their lost little ones, no matter what their age at death. By giving these parents an opportunity to talk about their experience, honors their loss, and at the same time, gives them the chance to imagine what their life might have been if their child had still been living. You would be giving a voice to a group of people who often feel voiceless because we don't want to make you uncomfortable. I want you to think about this for a second. What do you call a woman whose spouse has died? Widow. What do you call a man whose spouse has died? Widower. And a child whose parents have died? Orphan. But there's no single word for a parent whose child has died. Until now. After a lot of Googling, I came across the word Viloma. It's an ancient Sanskrit word that means against the natural order, as in a child should not precede us in death. We shouldn't have to bury our children, but sometimes, unfortunately, it happens. And when it does, in that fog of acute grief, we Vilomas realize that we not only want but we need to talk about our lost little ones. But because the subject is so raw and vulnerable and hard for most people to process, we're often silent. Today, I want our voices to be heard. And in those moments, we can breathe like we used to before our worlds turned upside down when we thought we could anticipate the ebb and flow of life, a time when we didn't understand the depths of what it is to love someone and then lose them. I've asked a few friends of mine who are Vilomas what they'd like you to know. 
my dear friend Lisa tells me that she would just love to hear her daughter's name spoken aloud. Amy, don't be afraid to say it. For Lisa, hearing Amy's name spoken aloud honors her memory and sparks something magical. Another Viloma named Henry tells me he often feels invisible when speaking about his late son Cameron because it makes people too uncomfortable. So Henry did something really deliberate to make sure he hears his son's name often and hopefully inspires a conversation about him. My friend Henry changed his own name and added a hyphen. So he's now Henry Cameron. <laughs> Isn't that creative? I think that's really cool. Another Viloma posted online, although we are not widowed nor orphaned, we are forever marked. I think a good descriptor would be shadow. But I believe we Velomas need to step out of the shadows, those dark places where grief stares us in the face every day. Step out of those shadows and speak about not only our sorrow, but about the joy and the happiness we once experienced with our child. When I was 16 years old, I learned that my own parents are Velomas. My mom and dad came to the United States in 1958. They were immigrants from Ireland. They left all their family behind to come on this big new adventure. And when they had their first child, my sister Orla, they decided to go back to Ireland to introduce her to the family. After a few days into their visit, my mom went into the nursery to get Orla and discovered that her baby girl was blue. She had died in her sleep. You can only imagine the agony and despair that followed. A doctor was called to the house. My sister was taken away, and my parents never saw Orla again. There was no funeral, no nothing, as if she didn't exist. Back then in Ireland and in the United States, People didn't talk about babies who died. It was just too uncomfortable. The grief nearly crippled my parents. They had to return to the United States to their little apartment filled with things for a baby and no baby. There were no support groups back then. The doctor told my father that my mom had lost the zest to live. The only prescription he had for them was to try and get pregnant again. And so they did. They went on to have my brother and me. And they also had a miscarriage, which my mom describes as traumatic. And that experience also was veiled in silence. So when my Macy passed in 2005, my husband Mike and I became Vilomas. My mom was able to provide a kind of understanding to help us find a new way to live without Macy by our side. Our friends and our family stepped way out of their comfort zones. They held us up figuratively and literally when we couldn't stand on our own. As time passed, I sought the help of grief counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists, clergy, none of it was helpful. Until a social worker told me about Compassionate Friends, a worldwide organization whose sole mission is to support bereaved parents, or Vilomas, as I now call myself. I believe that all of us can provide amazing healing and comfort to Vilomas if we all step out of our comfort zones. I've got three simple steps that I'd like to share with you today that will help you get comfortable talking to a Viloma and you'll also give them a voice at the same time. It's pretty simple. I call it the Viloma voice. 
And it starts with something like this. Step one, invitation. You don't have to go down some deep, dark path. You can simply say something like this. When you meet someone who has lost a child, say, I'm sorry for your loss. Would you like to talk about your child? At that point, it could go either way. If the answer is no, simply say, if you change your mind, I'd welcome the chance to talk. Step two, if the answer is yes, ask an open-ended question. Something like, will you tell me about your child? Step three, reflect. Repeat and rephrase and reflect on something you learned about their child. And most importantly, say their name aloud. That's it. Three simple steps. And by doing that, it is like wrapping a big blanket of love around a veloma. So I'm sure you all want to ask me about Macy right now, right? Yes? So Macy was born October 1st, 2004. She was a big baby, eight pounds, three ounces with all those gorgeous rolls. You know the kind where it looks like her little wrist was screwed onto her forearm, all those rolls and these eyes that would light up a room. A book I read when she was first born described babies with that easygoing disposition as angel babies, and that she was. When Macy was six months old, she was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, or AML. I didn't even know babies could get cancer, and certainly not that young. During Macy's illness and intense treatment, she was and continues to be the most courageous person I have ever known in my entire life. She faced a chemotherapy protocol that would buckle most of us. And she did it with a tenacity that showed me how to be brave three years ago when I went through my own cancer treatment. Macy's strength became my strength. Macy's grit became my grit. Unfortunately, Macy caught a little virus when she was in treatment, when her immune system was so depleted from the chemo. Her little body started to shut down. And on August 5th of 2005, Macy died. We all approach grief differently. For me, I love to talk about Macy, show you her pictures. They hang all over her house. My house, her house, our house. Her bedroom remains, and I sleep in it quite often. And if you have the courage to ask, I love talking about my Macy. Sometimes I think about what she would look like today act like, feel like. She'd be 15, so that would be a pretty interesting household with all those boys and then Macy. I also feel her presence all around me. I feel her right now. She's here with me. And it doesn't come as a surprise. Shortly after Macy died, another Viloma told me I would feel her especially in nature, particularly in nature. And for me, I knew she was there as a butterfly, which is an apropos symbol of transformation, of metamorphosis, and of change. And butterflies fill my garden every summer. They often show up just at the right time when I've had a really tough day. And all my friends and family call me, text me, and tell me when they see me, Sharon, I saw a butterfly today, and I thought of your Macy. Wow, what joy that brings to honor my girl's memory 
to give this Philoma a voice. So can we all say it again together? Ready? Viloma. One more time, let's get comfortable saying it together. Viloma. By saying it, you are giving a voice to those of us whose children went before us but are still very present in our lives today. Thank you.